Welcome into another episode of Fourth and Five, sponsored by Ortho Arkansas. A lot to get to here today, and I'm just going to go ahead and start. Y'all know how I am. I have a very hard time always keeping it real. Um, defense, you're not going to hear much about me from today uh, because y'all played awesome. I'll just leave it at that. Offensively, it's going to be a long film session, uh, especially the first quarter, second quarter. There's just so much left out on the field that I really feel like this team should be past the point of having such slow starts. And when you look at the tape, once again, just disappointing um, errors and some stuff where I'm looking at like, what in the hell is happening? Not trying to be pessimistic. I just have extremely high standards. And I think as a fan base, we all have high standards. That's why we're always on a roller coaster of emotions. All right. And in a game like this, I feel like we should have just blew them out. Um, but once again, Ortho Arkansas sponsoring this episode. Uh, what they do when it comes to people trying to bounce back from any orthopedic injury, they're the best in the game. And uh, as much as I say this week in and week out, I'm glad they're a sponsor. I'm glad they're helping make all this go. Um, but I'm partnering with them because I had firsthand experience with Ortho Arkansas getting me back on the field. When I was in high school, I slipped my disc and I herniated another one. I'm assuming they're the same things. Um, to the point where I had a hard time walking and I was in a big back brace and a doctor at a different hospital said I was done playing football. Uh, well, I went to Ortho Arkansas and they said, no, 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 no. We'll get you back on the field and we're going to do it safely. And uh, it was a long process. It was a tough process. But for a while there, I thought in high school, my days of playing football were over. Ortho Arkansas said not on their watch. So I really appreciate them and everything that they do. They're a sponsor and I endorse them because – well, I've just seen how good they are at what they do, and I want to make sure I spread the word. So if you're dealing with something, reach out to my friends over there at Ortho, Arkansas. All right, let's go ahead and get into this breakdown, and we're going to start in the first quarter, okay? And out the gate, very first play again. We talked about this last week. The first eight, hopefully your first play is a good one. Um, just struggle up front, and I will give – La Tech some credit. They had some very interesting defensive schemes. Let's go ahead and get right into it. First play up right here, you're going to go ahead and see – a lot of confusion. This is going to be a nice little dive to the right here on the line of scrimmage. But you're going to see what La Tech did um, is uh, make this block very difficult for your right guard, Braun. Right, Bra Ryan Braun is supposed to go up here and block this linebacker. Um, and the hope and the flow of the running back is going to bring him to Braun. Uh, that's not the case. This guy shoots the gap and makes it just about impossible for Braun to get this play, gets into the backfield, blows this thing up, never had a shot to go from the get-go. You can see Braun looking like, where'd he go? He's already in the backfield about to tackle the running back. Uh, that was just good scheme. Uh, I'll give that to um, La Tech on that one. Let's get to a second down, second and 11, and here's your go-to target. You got Andrew Armstrong up top running his slant route, and this is what's good about Taylor in this one. Even with pressure coming up the middle, you're going to see here in just a second, he can feel the pressure coming. Uh, he stands in the pocket, delivers a strike to Andrew Armstrong. You see the guy right there in his face. Great ball. Armstrong, one of the best receivers uh, in the country. I mean, his stats uh, back that up, no doubt about it. Get it to him again right here. I think he is now second all-time in Arkansas history when it comes to receptions in a single season, only behind Kobe Hamilton. All right, let's get into this second and one. Uh, this was a very bizarre play, and I'm sitting back here trying to figure out exactly what is happening on this play right here, and it was tough. So you're going to see Nichols, the center. He's going to pull all the way around and try to kick out this defensive end. Y'all stay with me on this because there's a lot going into this, and I think it's a little too complex for this play. Not a big fan of the design here. So Nichols pulls, and what's going to happen, they're going to leave that defensive tackle for your tight end to almost do a trap block. Not a big fan of that. Uh, that's a big boy. He's strong and aggressive. You don't see too often tight ends trap blocking nose tackles, or at least I think that's what they're trying to do right here because you're going to see Blackstock. He's trying to work up to this linebacker. Um, very interesting concept here. Um, but you can see in the works of Blackstock trying to get up to that linebacker, he's just caught up in all the trash. He can't get up to him. Luke has, you would hope at this point, would make the adjustment to pick up now the linebacker. But from Luke Haz's perspective, if you can kind of look at this clip, uh, he all he sees is the numbers of that nose tackle and feels like now, okay, I, I still need to block this guy. At least I think that's what's happening because you're going to see this guy just come free. But I think that's who Blackstock is working up to. Um, not a big fan of this design at all. Hopefully we don't call this play ever again. Um, gets a tackle for a loss. 
puts them in a third. What's the down? Third and three right here. And this one right here, everyone in the stadium, yeah, you're with me. Uh, Coach Petrino trying to dial it up and score a touchdown on the first drive of the game. You see the play concept right here. You're going to have, uh, I believe that's 47, leaking out of the backfield, completely unguarded. You can see as we go ahead and roll it right here, gets behind the defense. And Talon, as he rolls out, he's looking downfield to locate the safety, trying to figure out where he is. And the safety is exactly where he wants him to be. He's flowing to, I believe that is Jordan Anthony over there. I can't really tell. It may be Monte Harris, um, but he's flowing away from where the play is designed. Key word there, the play is designed. So Talon should know exactly where this ball should go. Why he doesn't throw this ball baffles me. And not just me. Uh, you'll see what I'm talking about here in a second. So right here, as we go just a little bit more, look at Talon's eyes. He's looking back towards the line of the scrimmage when you got this tight end completely wide open. I don't know what he's looking at. Um, this is a hard one to decipher, and it's not just me. Uh, take a look at this. Um, easy throw and catch should have been a touchdown, and as we roll forward a little bit more, as I zoom in to your right tackle, Amalia and Harris, he's looking at him too, saying, hey, um, he's that way. Throw him the ball. Plays like this, you rep in practice. Everyone knows like these kind of tr trick plays that catch them off guard that should go for touchdowns. And so when they dial this up in the huddle, they all say, okay, this could be it. He's literally pointing at him for Talon. Talon never takes his eyes to this guy. This is a – I don't know, man. This was a tough one to try to figure out for me. Uh, like I said, not exactly sure what is happening on this play right here. All right, let's go ahead and keep it moving. I say let's keep it moving. Um, take a look at this. This is pretty interesting. See him walking. He's looking to the scoreboard. You know who's waiting for him on that sideline. He's taking his time. You already know who's waiting for him on that sideline. He's looking up again. Here he is. Taylan. Now, I will say this. This is – I see that look right now, Coach Petrino. I already know what he's thinking. This is a dial down, dialed back, sorry, that is Coach Petrino. Um, I know he has to be fuming right now, has to be fuming, especially that Talon is walking off. I saw this so many times when Ryan Mallett was the quarterback or even Tyler Wilson was the quarterback. When they miss big plays like that, when they're drawn up to perfection and they're just missed, he doesn't let those guys walk around. He would grab them, talk to them. What are you thinking? What did you see? Why didn't you throw the ball? Um, I tell you, man, that is a different coach for Trino than what I'm used to. Um, all right, let's go ahead and keep the tape rolling. You can see him, you know, pointing like he was right there. No, he's throw, 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 throw the dang ball. Whew, interesting. All right, and I'm going to get back to this uh, next drive. You're going to see this concept. But before I talk about this concept, I said I'm not going to talk much about the defense. Literally, every time they had the offenses back, three and out. Three and out, three and out. Even if they gave up a first down or two, they got the ball back. And so you're not going to see much defense. Y'all stick around. Matt Harris is going to talk more about the defense and getting defensive with Matt Harris. Uh, that should be Tuesday night. You know, Matt has some things going on with his wife, you know, still struggling, um, getting used to chemotherapy, uh, as one could imagine. And so Matt, when he's available, he's going to be available. And that's when you're going to get your defensive packages moving forward. Okay. Uh, best wishes to the Harris family. As always, please remember to keep them in your thoughts and prayers. Katie's a warrior. I'll tell you that. All right, let's go and look at this concept right here. Uh, we used to run this back in Arkansas. This was actually the same concept uh, that we ran against Georgia. If you remember child's please, uh, the tight end's going to run like a five yard out. Uh, we called this play. I don't know if I want to say it just in case they call the same calls in the two minute and teams pick up on it. Uh, but the tight end is going to go out. You have this receiver, you know, kind of with the fade route or the go route, and they're going to pick on the corner. If the corner goes with the uh, receiver outside Tesla, then just a quick, easy throw to the tight end. If the corner sits, and then this is where it gets tricky. A very difficult ball. Ryan Mallett was great at it. That two hole shot. Let's see how it plays out real quick at the snap of the ball. Like I said, we're going to go ahead and key this DB. That's who we're going to be looking at. You can see right now he jumps up, all right? As soon as he jumps up, Taylor, he's looking right at it. He should know, okay, this is where my ball is going to go. It's going to be a, a two. It's going to be a shot. It has to be on a rope, and he knows it. And you can see the ball's just overthrown drastically. 
And uh, the window actually opened up a lot bigger than I expected, uh, but just uh, way over Tesla's head, high on that throw. And now you can see he missed a wide open touchdown. He's now overthrowing a couple guys and then get to just two plays later in this same drive, another overthrown ball. This is going to be the interception. And uh, you can see the concept right here on this third and seven. You're going to have Isaiah Satania blow the top off the offense, and Andrew Armstrong is going to come wide open underneath uh, with this deep dig route. And you can see Taylor eyeing it down. Uh, once again, let's bring your attention to Armstrong. Does a great job with this route, and he's open right now. Ball should be out as it is. Uh, just a bad ball. Um, didn't lead him at all. And even though he threw this way too high, um, he should be leading Armstrong. See, if I go right now, if he throws it a little bit flatter, Armstrong catches this. He's probably still running. Uh, just threw that ball way too high and threw an interception. And so starting off very unfortunate for the Arkansas Razorbacks on offense. And just this is just bad play by the quarterback. It is what it is. I think Taylor's a great guy. I love Taylor. Way too high on that throw. Uh, I think he's a better quarterback than that. I think he just came out with his mind not right. Now, obviously, we picked it up a little bit later in the game, but I, I feel like we should be past that point uh, against lower-level opponents. I'm not trying to talk crap about Law Tech, but just look at the resources of what they have compared to Arkansas. It is what it is. Uh, we should come out 1,000 miles an hour. I say that a lot and really put this team away in the first quarter. Um, I think that's where this program should be. All right, here we go. Let's get to these special teams things. This is the only thing that I – had a knock on the defensive side of the ball or special teams. I don't really know where I want to put this in a category. You can see number 13 right here on the edge. As, I'm not sure what he's looking at because uh, nothing's there. Uh, complete lack of awareness. They're in a almost prevent safe field goal block. They're only bringing pressure up the middle. They're not screaming those guys off the edge. And so when you do that, these guys should – Engage just for a second. Keep their eyes to make sure there is no fake. It's like they were prepared for it, but 13 just uh, being very lazy, not disciplined at all. Uh, he should have saw this coming from a 1,000 miles away um, just because he's not involved with the block. Um, just very lazy um, football right there from 13. Ended up giving up a fourth, and especially on a fourth and three. Are you kidding me? Uh, here's another look at it uh, right here. These guys, usually they're going for the block. You can see they're not. They're just stepping up, and they're trying to make sure they're not faking. Number one did a great job on the left side. 13, just uh, poor discipline. But you once again, you have to give credit to the defense. They stepped up and made sure they kept them out of the end zone. And then this is where it kind of started falling apart for Law Tech. I mean, this is you're on the road with a chance to go up against uh, an SEC team, and then you have guys false starting. I highlighted the tight end. It was actually the tight end and right guard who false started. Then you get the bad snap on third and goal. Put yourself out of field goal range pretty much. See, the quarterback's not even looking. I think uh, the, the center just snapped this way too early. Um, yeah, that's on the center right there. And then they end up missing the field goal. So, like I said, at this point, Arkansas – should technically be down 7-0 right now. Um, all right, let's go ahead and move forward to the next offensive possession. And this is another one where the blocking is an art. I'll, I'll say that. And when you go to block guys, especially linebackers on the second level, and like I said, I feel like we should be way past this. And I'm going to pick on Luke. I love Luke has. That's my boy. Uh, he's going to jab step at this defensive end, and he's going to work up to the linebacker. You can see that linebacker closest to Luke. Uh, right here. I got him highlighted. Um, he should jab and go to where the linebacker's going to be. You don't go to where he's at because when the ball snaps and people are moving, everything moves. And so if you go to that point he's at when the ball is snapped, he won't be there by the time the play is over. You need to understand the running back's path and uh, where the running back is going to bring the linebacker and then meet the linebacker at the point. You can see it right here. Uh, he's going to jab and just miss this linebacker, and he's going to be the first one making contact in the backfield. And now there's a whole bunch of other things that happen on that play, but I just want to make sure Luke sees that so he can make sure we get away from that in the following weeks. We're going to have to have that against Missouri. All right, let's get to a second and 12. Um, great job moving the ball. We're trying to get back on track uh, after that great pickup. This is actually really good of Taylor Green right here. This is what I – 
really like to see when it comes to growth. You know, he loves to lock, lock on Andrew Armstrong. Okay, that's his favorite target. And you can see him eyeing him down right here, and he wants to throw the ball right now. Um, but he does a great job seeing this defensive end drop. You can see him right here. He drops underneath Armstrong. Now he knows he's taking away that passing lane. So he immediately gets his eyes to Isaiah Satania and fires it. He gets it out quick. Now, Satania, you've got to catch that ball. Um, you had a really good catch later in the game, so I'll let that one pass. But that was just great to see uh, from Taylor Green. All right, let's go ahead and get to this next play uh, right here. This is just pre-snap recognition and where you want to throw the ball. Right now, they're showing a man-to-man -man look across the board. You can see everybody's matched up. And the, the reason I say across the board, there's no single high safety. You got seven in the box, as you can see uh, right here. Seven guys all in the box. You just have to figure out where you want to go, okay? And so let's go ahead. And, oh, I take that back. I'm on the wrong play. This is interesting, okay? Everybody's in man-to-man, -man, seven in the box. I want y'all to look at the communication between Taylor Green and Jaquindon Jackson. Uh, this is pretty wild because because even Jaquindon Jackson knows, hey, they got seven in the box. We only got five offensive linemen, and we're about to run the ball. I think maybe we should check out of this play. You're going to see a quick little signal. Taylor's going to put his left hand behind his back, indicating uh, where the ball's going to go for Jaquindon Jackson, okay? You're going to see that, and as soon as Taylor does that, Jaquindon puts his hands up like, whoa. You see him, right? He puts his hands up like, what, what, what are you doing, all right? And then look at the play as it goes and watch uh, Jaquindon's body language after this. I mean, he knew this was a no-go before the ball was even snapped. And so pre-snap recognition, you would like it to be better. You can just tell by his body language. Get me out of the game. Uh, very unfortunate to see. All right, now let's get to a little bit of uh, pre-snap recognition when it comes to the pass. Um, you can see right now, just based off this alignment, I've, I've said this from the get-go, when you got guys stacked um, – it's a big indicator that the dude who's closest to the line of scrimmage is going to come, and he's not necessarily going to guard that receiver. That's why that safety is cheated over to make sure he can get to him quicker. And the thing about it is, look at Andrew Armstrong. He's pointing at him. He's letting Taylor know, hey, this guy's coming. All right, so now that we understand that guy's coming, let's go ahead and understand what our concepts are. He's coming, so it's most likely going to be another man-to-man -man situation, third and ten. That safety is going to rotate to the middle of the field. You can see him already starting to walk that way. And then if I, if it were me and I were Taylor Green, understanding it's man-to-man, -man, who am I going to pick first? Who, who am I going to look at? And it has to be Andrew Armstrong because he has the whole middle of the field to work with, with the guy about 12 yards off the ball from him. So much space for him to make something happen. Um, and you can see right now, as we kind of get things rolling with Andrew Armstrong, does a great job taking his time, sticking his foot in the ground. Ball would love for it to be out right now. If he catches this, I do believe he makes the first down at least, potentially make one miss, and then we're off to the races. Remember, this is man-to-man -man with only one high safety who's ran off on the other side of the field. Um, but now this is the thing. Okay, cool. First down anyway. I just like to see Taylor not necessarily have to use his feet because it prevents things like this from happening, all right? And here we go. The penalties start running in from the one and only Blackstock. All right. Before we get into Blackstock, this is what that pocket looked like when Taylor decided to get out of it. That looks pretty clean to me. Um, I'm not sh exactly sure what's making him so antsy right here. I why do I say that? Yes, I know what's making him antsy. Um, it's all the stuff that's happened before. This is the hardest part for a quarterback. You got to have that short-term memory when it comes to – pressure coming through and you getting hit because right now all this says stay in the pocket and uh, if he steps up to the right he has a pretty clean pocket and he can get that ball to Andrew Armstrong now he steps out to the left and yes Blackstock can't do this at this point you gotta let him go that's too obvious of, of a hold uh, but I'm not sure if this guy doesn't get to Taylor here now I would love to say with Taylor and how athletic he is he gets away from that um, but yeah that comes back that place got stopped before it even started even though Taylor picked it up with his legs. Um, just like I said, continue to watch some very interesting tape unfold. Defense gets back out on the field, third and 10, just doing what they do, and gives the ball right back to the offense. You can see pressure coming off the edge, and now the offense has the ball back. And so, like I said, at this point, first quarter is almost over, 0-0. This is why I said all the things I said post game. 
of I still can't believe we're dealing with the same issues, okay? And things pop up on tape just keep getting worse, okay? Before we get into that, I have to go ahead and give an update uh, to our sponsor for this breakdown. We got my guy Sam, uh, who's over there at Riser Harness Forward, that is. And uh, I'll, I'll tell you this. I don't want to get to the point where I'm just throwing deals at you and saying, buy this car, do this, do that, buy this. Um, I really want you all to know the people behind these companies who we choose to work with. And Sam, I was talking to him. He was telling me about some situations he had with some clients. And I was just like, you have to tell our viewers that. All right. Because we're not trying to sell you all car. We're not trying to sell we're trying to sell you the people to work with if you need something. And I think if you listen to this, you're really going to understand why if you're in that area or not that area and you're looking to get a good deal with somebody you can trust, I'm telling you, Sam's going to be your guy. Let's go ahead and uh, take a quick word from Sam, and then we'll get right back to this breakdown. I'll tell you, you don't want to miss it. Stick around for it. All right, he is the man himself, Sam, back at it once again. And Sam, as much as we've been talking about these deals, what you can get with saving money to buying cars, I wanted to pump the brakes just a little bit, no pun intended uh, intended there at all. But um, I, I just want to make sure our viewers understand that the people that we choose to get into business with here on 4th and 5 are some legit people. So if you will uh, entertain me, let's get away from talking about what deals you have going on right now at the dealership. I want people to know about you uh, and because there's going to be people coming to you, Sam, uh, first time ever buying a car. They may not know exactly even where to start. And if that's the case, they're putting a lot of trust into a stranger. So let's try to push that stranger part aside and let's learn a little bit more about the person that they're going to be into business with. So you have anything that you could maybe tell us of some situations you've had with clients before in the past that kind of resonate with you that make you feel like you want to make sure you do right by your customers? Yeah. So uh, yeah, great question. First of all, yeah, I had a scenario that as a matter of fact, just happened yesterday on the lot. Um, it, it was, it kind of made everything come full circle for me, uh, but I've only been doing this a couple of months. One of my first customers that came in, it was a couple, they were 19, 20 years old and it was after close one night and I was walking through the parking lot and I just saw two little heads going in between cars out there. So I went out to see what was going on and sure enough, it was this young couple and they were just in shock. They had just bought a vehicle a few months prior to that that they depended on, just like so many of us have when we first got married and had that young family. We needed that vehicle. Mm -hmm. And our whole lives were dependent on it. And so they were walking through there. You could tell they were in shock. You could see it on their face. And I asked, what's going on, guys? And they said, we just found out that the vehicle that we bought from a little car dealership outside of town, uh, the engine it's blown up. We just found out from mm. your service department and they were about $10,000 upside down on that vehicle. Ooh. And that's what those places do. And so anyway, I took them into my office, sat down and I said, you know what? I, I need to give you here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to give you the keys to one of these cars out here, take that car home. And in the meantime, you're going to come back and see me tomorrow, but I want you to bring your dad or somebody. I understand your adults can make your own decisions and that mm. sort of thing and very independent and all that. But I have kids that age. I would want to be their advocate. I would want to sit in on those negotiations. I would want to make sure that that car salesman was doing the best that he could for my kids in this situation. Wow. Well, that kind of came full circle yesterday. Uh, I've got a, I, they were probably in their late fifties couple come in and uh, meet with me. And they said, Hey, look, we're going to finally purchase our dream vehicle. It's the most expensive expedition we had on the lot, the King oh, Ranch. Wow. It was time. It was finally time. They had worked so hard all their lives to get to this mm -hmm. point. And so I always introduce the vehicle, pull it up, introduce it to the people, just let them have their space to walk around and familiarize themselves with the vehicle. I just get out of the way. Yeah. And so I'm standing inside the dealership, peeking out there watching. And it came to me that this was full circle from that other couple that I met, that this was not a decision that was made over breakfast this morning to come out. Yeah. This was the culmination of that young man, just like I did with my young wife. And you probably yeah. do. You look at him and, and you feel kind of down, but and you're worried, but you want to reassure and you say someday, someday mm. things. And for that couple yesterday, that was their day. Wow. And I take that personal. I take wow. that very personal because I've been there. And wow, that legit gave me a little bit goosebumps. I'm not gonna lie, right here. <laughs> well, it gave me goosebumps as I watched them. As I watched them out there, I started getting these goosebumps, and I looked at at the owner and I said, "This, 
this means something. This yeah. means so much more. And so we celebrated it yesterday. Good. Uh, so it was a, it was a really it was a really cool day. Uh, Sam, that's awesome. And I, that's why I wanted to ask you that today, because, you know, we can sit here and talk deals and deals and deals. And, you know, sometimes it just goes right over people because, to be honest, you can probably find a good deal almost anywhere. Uh, but it's right. about the people you choose to work with. And you got to make sure people, you know, have your best interest. And you taking that moment with that first young couple and saying, hey, take the keys, take your time, come back, bring somebody that you trust to make sure you can bounce some questions off of. I know some salespeople, they would hate the idea if a young couple was out there and their parents came because they would be, oh, they're going to ask all these questions, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sam, I think that's awesome, man. And uh, that's why I'm glad um, we linked up and you're a part of fourth and five. And I can feel very confident of recommending to send people your way when it comes to making a big time purchase. So uh, that being said, we'll talk more deals a little bit later uh, as we do more fourth and five episodes. But first, if people want to work with you and they want now they, they feel like they can trust you when it comes to making a purchase, how can they go about reaching out to you? Yeah, just um, I'm on Facebook, Instagram. You've got it here just in the corner of the screen, my my profile. And then you can always call the dealership. It's 501-268-2486. Mm -hmm. uh, I am here Monday through Saturday from 8 o'clock in the morning, 8.30 in the morning until we close at night and we close when the last customer leaves. Hey, you're the man, Sam. I appreciate you. And uh, I'll actually uh, be seeing Sam in person later this week as well. We're working on some things for the future for fourth and five. So, Sam, uh, I'll see you. When is this going to air? I'll see you Tuesday. How about that? Yep. Sound good like a plan? Yep. Sure, All we'll right, see man. you tomorrow. Sam, All right. I take care, DJ. You. Yep. Bye. All right. Like I said, uh, absolutely love Sam. And uh, y'all, please, uh, if y'all are not, he, he's a good one. All right. So, uh, if you're in the business for looking for a car, uh, please give him a nod at least. Uh, I think he's an incredible individual. Let's get back into this breakdown. You can see this play being set up. This is going to be a toss play to Jaquindon Jackson. So on this toss play, it all starts at the point of attack. You have to seal the edge of the line of scrimmage. Who's that going to be? Our tight end. We got uh, Dre right here, our tight end. You can see he's actually lined up a little outside of this defensive end. So he has the advantage to get this block. Uh, just doesn't do a good job once again with this first step. I said the same thing with Luke. Don't go to where he currently is. Go to where he's going to be. He should make sure that he stays on the outside side of this defensive end, but he lets him cross his face. You can see it right there. Now the play's done. Play's done for uh, because that throws off everyone's blocks. You have to seal the edge on a toss play. As you can see, as we get moving, Carmona idealistically would love to get up to this uh, secondary, the second level defender, and then let Jaquindon do his thing. I mean, it's opening up beautiful for an easy first down. Um, but you can see right here as we get moving, he bumps into the guy that Dre didn't get blocked, and it just clogs it all up. All right, let's get to this second and six. Uh, just once again, kind of sloppy play, bad snap. Our backup center. No, actually, that is Nichols in at that time. I thought that was our backup center. It's not. Bad snap. Uh, didn't get it going. Okay, that brings me to this play right here. And this will be the only time I'm going to say I'm mad at Andrew Armstrong. Actually, I'm going to get on to you twice this time, Armstrong. Uh, the only reason I'm mad at you for jumping off sides on this play because I wanted to see what would happen if somebody lined up in the A-gap again, would we pick up the pressure? We didn't do it against Ole Miss. We didn't do it against Texas. Surely a team was going to try it. What would we do? And you can see it right now. I got it highlighted. You got Nichols looking at these two guys in the A-gap, one on the right side, one on the left side. And this is what was cool to see. We're learning from our mistakes. The communication up front. Look at everybody point. Everybody's pointing. This guy's A-gap. I got this guy. Look at the right guard. I got this guy. I got this guy. The communication was awesome. Then Armstrong jumped off side. Oh, Andrew, I needed to see what was going to happen on that play. Dang it. I really wanted to see if they would pick that up. Oh, well. You're still my boy, though. Uh, still think you're a great ball player. Anyway, I guess maybe we'll see against Missouri. Um, all right. Let's go ahead and get to the very next play. Third and 11. All right. And we got another situation on our hands. Um, you can see right now it'd be nice to get this ball to Andrew Armstrong in this concept, which opened up beautifully. Unfortunately, couldn't get that thing out. Um, why is that? Obviously, there's pressure in the backfield. And this is where we've talked about this too many times. So what I have done this week, we talk about slide protection, okay? 
Grant Cook talks about it all the time. I'm going to continue to talk about it. And this time I'm going to make it easy for you. I'm going to literally paint the picture for you. Okay, let's break it down. All right. Um, let's get right into it. Let's take a quick look. Literally, I got it color coordinated for you. Who has what gap responsibility? All right. So you got your left tackle, Carmona, who's in the red. He is responsible for this guy outside because backside of slide protection, as Grant would say, is going to be your man to man side. Then you have Blackstock, your left guard. He's going to be sliding down to the gap inside of him. Who's occupying that gap? That is going to be number 90, highlighted in yellow. Then let's go to green, your center, Nichols, who he's going to be sliding to the right. Number 21 is in that gap. I got it highlighted for you. Braun in blue, sliding outside. And then you have Amarian Harris, who's purple. And you can see right there, he's sliding out with the intention of, of paying attention inside, but he's sliding out if someone comes off the edge. I got it highlighted in purple. Who's going to block that guy right over the guard, DJ? Don't worry. I got you covered. That's your back's responsibility, okay? So we talked about it was a little different last week because in the play call, the back was out and around. The back is in protection this time, okay? And he, has a, he does a really good job right here because the thing is, if that guy comes, the back has him. If he doesn't come, then the back's going to be out and around. You can see him right now. Jaquindon does a great job um, seeing that this guy obviously isn't coming, so he's going to get out into his route. And this is where it gets tricky. There should be an easy slide protection to the right. Just get to your gap. It's not that hard. I don't understand. Yeah, but as we go ahead and take a look at Blackstop, just poor technique, body position completely, uh, not even close to where it needs to be. And this guy just slips right in between the center and the guard. Now, once again, remember, uh, Nichols was responsible for that gap outside. Now that he knows it's not good, then he can come back and help. But who's responsible for his inside is Blackstock. And there's nothing keeping him from not getting there much faster than this. And it gives up a sack. Like I said, I just don't get it. And I don't understand why it keeps happening. Um, all right, look at that. First eight possessions of the game, 47 total yards. Let's just try to get something going. This is the beginning of the second quarter, and it just kind of keeps on rolling. All right, second and four right here, motion a guy out of the backfield. And let's see what we got. Um, when, when Remember what I talked about, defenders starting to do what they're not supposed to do? This goes all the way back to Auburn. This guy's just looking at Taylor the whole time. And he shouldn't, all right? Because usually if you put your eyes in the backfield, if you're playing against a great quarterback, he can use his eyes to manipulate you and put you right where he wants you to be. And uh, you, it's very telling on this play right here. Because look at Isaiah Satania running an out route. This guy's still looking at Taylor, not paying any attention to Satania. I mean, uh, that's pretty wild. He should at least acknowledge Satania, because if not, then he's going to be wide open. But he's just eyeing down um, Taylor Green, because he knows that's where the ball is going to go. And then Taylor gets his eyes here, and you can see as soon as he shifts his eyes, um, it brings this backer over. Now, I'm not saying this is on Taylor, all right? This drop is on Armstrong, okay? Andrew, you got to catch this ball, all right? Um, and you got to hold on. You got to know it's coming. Um, but, yeah, I, I just thought that was very interesting how players are picking up on our quarterback's tendencies, and it's allowing them to get to places a little bit faster because look at Satania up there all by himself. That guy's not even acknowledging him. Um, but, yeah, you can see it right there, but still got to catch this ball, and you're going to have to just take some of those on the chin sometime, my guy. Look right here. You see that little radar? Head got to be on a swivel, and he's looking right at him. And I'm just giving you a hard time because I know you're probably giving yourself more of a hard time for not holding on to this ball and then it end up being a fumble and a turnover. All right, let's go ahead and keep it rolling right here. Once again, defense on the field. And I don't have much to say about the defense at all. Just a couple clips. I'm still going to save most of that for Matt Harris. Uh, but let's take a look at Landon Jackson, a guy that I've been on for a big part of the year. But he's he's been turning it up and he's been answering the call. He's starting to start making those plays like we expected him to. Um, and see right here, he's going to get good extension, a little anchor. Then he's going to use the tackles momentum against him and then jumps up, tips that ball. You can see this. Look, look at this. Give me that. Uh, ah, reached out full. What's that vertical right there, Landon? That looks about a 22. I'm assuming you jump higher right there, but you were falling down coming out of that. Still a great job getting a tip on that ball. 
Uh, fun to see. Congratulations on a win on your last home game at Razorback Stadium. Here's another play right here where uh, Taylor needs to do a better job with his mechanics. I'm sorry if I'm seeming like I'm picking on Taylor a lot, but just got to do a little bit better with your mechanics on uh, these type of plays. Uh, we're going to run a play action, okay? And it's going to act like a run to the left, uh, but the key is who you're trying to manipulate, all right? So you're going to run that play action with the hopes of Armstrong coming up wide open on the backside, but you have to get this guy out of the way. You see that you need that play action to make this guy move to the right side of the line of scrimmage. But let's go ahead and take a look right here. He's eyeing it down. He's waiting to see. Is he going to hand this ball off? All right. This is where you have to be great with these mechanics. Uh, Ryan Mallett did such a great job on these of holding it for a second and then having an empty hand out like this, having an empty hand out. And he would wait. He would wait. He would really sell it. That linebacker has to make his mind up. Does he have the ball or not? There's no way he's waiting that long. Then he goes off to try to go get the running back. But this happened a little too quick, right? See how quick that happens? Linebacker's looking at Jaquindon trying to go through the fake, but he already sees um, Taylor Green with the ball coming out. So he, he's not fooled at all. Look at that. And that allows him to get under Andrew Armstrong. Should have threw this ball away almost through a pick right here. Like I said, small little mechanics change everything in decision-making right there, not needing to force it. It took a while for Taylor to kind of wake up and get going. Um, but when he did, you know, he's a good ball player. Um, all right, let's go ahead and keep this thing rolling right here. You can see, let's pick it up. Let's keep things moving. This is second down. I see you, big loop. Tell him to hit the weights, big dog. Got like that. <laughs> all right. Uh, let's take a look at Jaquinda Jackson on this next play. This was kind of uncharacteristic for him. Um, he's going to, he's really good at putting one foot in the ground and seeing the lane and hitting it. He, this is his bread and butter. And he was, you see him kind of hesitate and then try to get back to it. Ends up uh, not having it. We had a real big opportunity to, to get a good gain on that play. But let's go ahead and look at the very next play. Uh, he, he makes the adjustments really quick, and it's cool to watch. Uh, same thing right here. Uh, he sees it. He sees the lane right now, one foot in the ground, and then he busts through that hole. That's the, the, the Sorry, that's the Jaquindon Jackson that we're used to and fun to watch. All right, so he's a good ball player. However, boom, you see it. Got the flag. He realizes it's his flag. He points at it. He's like, Dad, gum it. Who could it be? Who's holding? Mm. <laughs> All right. You can see him right here. Um, Blackstock, uh, this guy's coming down. You can't bear hug him. All right. You got to keep your hands inside, especially with that referee right in the middle of the field. A full bear hug. They're going to call that every time. Every time they're going to call that. Hate to see it. Um, he tries to get back and drives into the ground. I like the way you tried to finish it, but the initial contact, you got to keep your hands inside. Ball's moving again. Andrew Armstrong doing his thing, being a baller. And then we get to a second and five. We struggle on the outside. Uh, and Marion Harris, you're way better than this. Uh, technique just off a little lazy. Let this guy get inside of you. Uh, got to be better than that, especially on the run play. Um, ends up having an easy tackle right there, maybe for a loss. I can't remember exactly. Yeah. Oh, actually, a one-yard gain. And then we get to this third and four situation. Um, we get it tight to the line of scrimmage. We keep rolling, fourth and one. Taylor does a great job uh, pulling it on this one. We got some momentum going. Get to a first and ten. Great throw right here to Luke again on the outside. He did a great job uh, making sure he they stayed honest with keeping – Luke covered over there. Every time they weren't, they took advantage of it. All right, then you got this play drawn up right here to perfection. You have Tesla going to be deep in the end zone. Then you're going to have Isaiah Satania shallow. They're picking on this defender right here. He has to pick. Who's he going to be? You can't play in the middle. You got to go deep or you got to go shallow. Taylor does a great job with this read. You can see it right there. He goes shallow. See him right there? Now, I wish the ball was already in the air. Uh, because watch how tight this is. You play against a little bit better DB. Ball's in the air. DB's right on it. That's a tight window. Um, I was worried about a little interception. Could have got the ball out just a little bit earlier. Still a good throw. Um, just like I said, always little things to work on. Um, but yeah, Tesla does a great job with the catch right there. Um, all right, finally on the board. Almost uh, to the sec uh, almost the end of the first half, and we're finally on the board. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at this next concept uh, right here. And this is, once again, Taylor with this decision-making, um, enforcing it too much. You're going to have – I know this play, tight ends. I know you know this play. 
Um, this is going to open it up. Back's going to run out to try to bring that corner down. You have Tesla running the guy off on the outside, and this is actually an option route for Luke. He chooses to take this one outside. You see right here, um, steps outside in the corner. That's going to be another big indicator. If you take this one outside, uh, Taylor can't throw this too far to the sideline because that corner didn't come up to that back. And then you have this guy dropping underneath. Uh, I think you got different options on this one. I, I wouldn't mind him getting that ball out to Jaquindon, trying to let him get the first, but Luke's definitely not an option. And you can see you have Satania too. And you think you got plenty of time. Look at your pocket. They're only rushing three and no one's close to you. Um, he just forced this one, threw it way too high. Another another forced play right there on the third and three. And now it gets to this fourth and three, and this is where it gets interesting. This is his touchdown run, spectacular run right here. Um, but sometimes you don't have to make those runs. Let's uh, see what we got first. We got man-to-man -man across the board. It's pretty straightforward. You can see it. Fourth down uh, It's most likely what you're going to get. And who are we going to highlight? Let's look at Andrew Armstrong right here. Um, like I said, second leading receiver in the SEC, maybe first now. Who knows? And this is what's cool with him. So he's running like a little slant cross route, whatever. Uh, most receivers would just keep running and trying to get open. What he does so good, as soon as he gets this guy trailing on him, he gives him a nod. That's going to create space, and then he flattens it out. That's 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 how do you run routes, all right? A lot of guys don't do this. Andrew Armstrong does a great job. Watch him right here. He's going to nod, and that creates the space that he needs, and the ball should have been out right there. Not sure why Taylor's running right here. Pocket looks clean. Now, you can't knock it when he does this, okay? So, ends up turning it into a touchdown. You know, we'll take it. We'll be happy with it. Moving on. Um, but you like? I would like to see that ball come out. Um, I really would. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get to a stopping point. I actually got a few more clips that I want to show you because there's just so much film to break down. Still much more from what I already showed you. So, yes, we won. Yes, I'm happy. Yes, it's great. I think we could be playing a lot better, and I think the tape, shows that once again defense y'all be on the lookout for what you got in offensive line grant cook and i we're going to talk about it thursday and if y'all want me to finish this breakdown give you maybe part b uh leave comments and if y'all like it then i'll go ahead and throw that one up there like i said i still have a lot more tape to get through i'm just running tight on time my girlfriend wants to go watch wicked and it starts here in about 10 minutes so i gotta get going all right so appreciate y'all everything y'all do on being a great community here at fourth and five we got one more game in missouri we'll give you some pre-game uh, analysis for that take a look at missouri to see if we really got a shot at winning six games this year as always i appreciate y'all watching fourth and five